Welcome to Mediocre Gaming, and today we're playing Destiny 2. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and salutations. Today, the throne is calling. Let's get to it. Another week has gone by, and this week, the Shattered Throne is available. Now, this is going to be the Shattered Throne in its entirety, two-man, in case you're looking to do that majestic masterworking from the Solstice event. Now, although the Solstice event is over, as long as you have the purple armor, you can still masterwork it. All right, so starting with a setup. Now, I started with the Blast Furnace in the Kinetic slot, the Tatara Gaze in the second slot, and the Power Weapon Whisper of the Worm with the Catalyst on it. Now, once we get to the Ogre, or close to the Ogre, I'll switch to a Void Energy Weapon, the Arantil, and then at the end... I'll switch to a shotgun, the retold tail. Uh, you can use whatever you're most comfortable with. This is the setup that I used. And then of course, whatever you use, make sure that you have reserves on the helmet and then scavenger on the arms. And then a special ammo finder and one heavy ammo finder to help you find more of that ammo that you're going to need along the way. Now the first step in doing the Shattered Throne is making sure you're topped off on ammo. So after you switch your weapons to whatever you're going to use in your subclass and your armor, go ahead and either go to the tribute hall or hit a flag before a public event to top off all your ammo. Your super will disappear once you start the Shattered Throne, so that really isn't important. So once you have your ammo, you're going to go to the Dreaming City. There's only one landing zone, so go there, make your way to the Confluence. The closest one is either in the Gardens of Asilla, which you'll have to go through two zones to get to, or you'll go over to the Spine of Curies and then go into the portal there. Now once you get to the Confluence, there will be an Awoken by the portal that will start the mission. Start up the mission, and then you're ready to go. Now, if you're going to try to do this solo or with another person, and you do not want that third person, you may want to change your fire team setting from public to invite only, just so there's no sna snafus, especially as you get to the end. Now, in the first section, there are seven different glyphs that you'll be looking for. There are three on the left-hand side, three on the right-hand side, and then one in the middle. The one in the middle will always be the last one, so seven total glyphs, and then it is completely random which one you get. Uh, this particular round, we got all of them on the left-hand side and then all of them on the right-hand side, which did make it a little bit faster. Now, the ones on the left-hand side, if you get these glyphs, you'll know that it's on the left, and what I'm saying left as in where you start off, you go into a main room inside a building, and then you'll either turn to the left or turn to the right to go to these different glyphs. And that's what I mean. So if you see a dragon or infinite snake or circle of two fish, those are on the left-hand side. The right-hand side, of course, are the others, the jumping fish, the standing bird, or the double-headed snake. Those are on the right-hand side. And then once you see the diving bird, then that is the last symbol. You'll go back to that building in the middle. There'll be a boss there. Once you take him out, you'll get a drop and then the floor will open and you'll be able to go to the next stage. Now, the entire Shattered Throne can be done relatively quickly. Now, if you're going in to do the extra things like picking up the bones or if you're looking for the corrupted eggs or if you're doing the Wish Ender quest line, those will obviously take you a little bit longer to do.
Guardian down. Guardian down.
Thank <laughs> you. 
The next stage will bring you to a set of stairs going down and then there's enemies down below. Take out those enemies. And then as you come around the curve, there's going to be a veritable smorgasbord of snipers. Take out each of the snipers as you go up and then back around up again. Then you'll get to the little mini boss of this area, which is another taken knight. Once you take out the knight, the door will open for the next section, which has more shields and more snipers. Just take your time, take out the shields, take out the snipers, and there's a couple of knights along the way. Take all of them out and you're ready for the next section.
The next section involves platforms and ogres. Now the ogres with their I-beam will knock you off, so you'll want to take them out quickly. And if you have to fight them out in the open, you'll want to be on one of the middle platforms and not on one of the ledges in between. Now, once you navigate that area, uh, as it is procedural, where the Taken Blights show up will change from time to time. And I mean from run to run, not randomly as you're doing it. So once you get into the area, Taken Blights and the Ogres will show up, and that will determine the path that you take. So the path that I take may not be the same path that you're able to take. Once you navigate that maze and take out the Ogres, then you're ready for the next stage. Guardian down. Down. The next stage has you running for your life from Shadow Thrall, and there's going to be a lot of Thrall, and you won't actually be able to run because you'll be slowed. Now, as you'll see, you are able to get up onto a platform to take a small breather before you're ready to go, and then follow the path, avoiding the Thrall as best you can if you want as a group. You can fight your way, uh, but they will start spawning behind you. So you'll need to have one person fighting in front and another person fighting behind. 
it is much easier just to kind of race through it rather than muddle through while you're fighting. Uh, it's a little bit higher of a risk to do it that way. Now once you get to the slowed area and past it, Then you'll be on to the next area and anyone that died will automatically be revived. And there's two ways that you can go across. You can go up or you can go through the goo down below. There will be a bevy of shielders in this section. Go ahead and take them out. When you're ready, you'll want to switch your weapon to a close range or some type of void weapon in the energy slot, uh, at least in the energy slot, and get ready for the ogre stage. Now once you get to the ogre stage, if you can do this stage, you can do anything in the Shattered Throne. This is probably the most difficult section of the Shattered Throne. There's going to be four wizards 
in the four cardinal directions. There's going to be an ogre, the boss, in the middle with a shield, and there's going to be a variety of snipers and shielders around next to each wizard. Now I do recommend going in a circle, either counterclockwise or clockwise, it doesn't really matter, as long as you're together as a fire team. If you start splitting up, that's when things start falling apart. Take out the helpers, take out the snipers, and then take out the wizard. The wizard will drop an orb, pick up the orb, and then you're on the clock. There'll be a timer on the left-hand side. It will continue to count down until you get the next orb from the next wizard. So you only have a certain amount of time in between each orb. So quickly get to the next orb. If you start getting low, you know, use your power weapon, use your energy weapon, use what you need to do to get that next orb. Because if the countdown gets to zero, your fire team will die. Now, if one of your team members die after you pick up the orb, then they will be missing one orb and you will need all four orbs on at least one of the people in your fire team in order to progress. So if you both die, or all three of you die if you're playing with three players, then you will have to kill one extra wizard, or two, or three, depending on at what point each person died. Now that buff will change to a burden once you have all four. Once you have all four, then you'll go to one of the four glowing podiums that are close to the middle section and slam the orb there. That will drop the shield around the ogre. If you have two, or I should say more than one people in your fire team for this, then you'll want one person to focus on the Axion darts that will be coming from the ogre so that you don't die. If you have a Well of Radiance, that will be a great help, although that won't completely keep you from dying. So I have one person on the darts, and then everyone else or the other person attacking the ogre. Now, if you're by yourself, it will be more difficult, but it, it, it does have a cadence to it. So you can attack the darts, get rid of the darts, and then do damage to the ogre, and then switch off and attack the darts again, and then attack the ogre. And then after approximately 30 seconds, his shield will come back, and then you'll just have to rinse and repeat. If you're by yourself and you're a warlock, of course you're going to want to use the Well of Radiance. If you also have Luna Faction, that will help you a great deal taking out the orbs and damaging the ogre without having to reload. If you're a titan, make sure you have a Rally Barricade, again, so you don't have to reload as you're attacking the ogre. Using something like the Whisper or the Sleeper Simulant will help you do a large amount of damage very, very quickly to the ogre during the damage phase. Now, if you're a hunter and you're by yourself, make sure that you have the marksman dodge so that you can reload your heavy ammo, whatever you're using to damage the ogre in case you're not using the whisper to reload and then attack with say something like a blast furnace, the Axion darts, something that has feeding frenzy, something that's easy to take out those six or seven darts and then reload very quickly, switch to your damage weapon, do some damage, and then switch back.
Once you kill the ogre, you'll have to go through a little bit of a maze to get to the next part. And of course, there will be enemies along the way. Now, whether you engage with the enemies or don't is going to be a tactical decision. Some of them you'll be able to run past and others you will need to engage with. Uh, in particular, the shield enemies you will likely want to take out before you move on. The other ones you don't necessarily have to, although it may make it easier to get to the end without dying.
Now the final encounter is with Dol Inkaru, the wizard. If you're in a fire team of at least two, have one person designated for the left side, one designated for the right side, and those people will be responsible for taking out the ads in those areas. There are three knights, and then the wizard. The wizard is invulnerable until you get to the damage phase. So when you start the encounter, there'll be ads that spawn both on the left and the right side, and they are the Taken that will, Taken Scions that split. So you do not want a room full of those Taken Scions, so make sure that you take them out. I would recommend using a grenade that can take them out, and just be sure that you get them all before you move on. Now, once you get all of those Taken Scions out of the picture, then you can damage the Knights. I recommend a special ammo weapon like a shotgun or a fusion rifle or even a sniper rifle, although I don't recommend that as strongly, and I'll tell you why here in a second. So damage the knights until you get down to right about one third of the total health, and then switch damage to one of the other knights. And of course you can have, if you have three people on your fire team, you can have each person work on a different knight. If there's only two or one, then obviously you're not going to do that. You're going to either focus on one or focus on two. And occasionally the knights will disappear and then they'll reappear back where they disappeared. Now the reason I say to take them down to one third of their total health, because once you get below that, their helmet gets knocked off and they will start to run. They're much more manageable with their helmet on than with their helmet off. And depending on the timing, will determine when you want to do that. So at some point, Dole and Karo will conjure a crystal. This will put a shield around all the knights and you won't be able to damage them. Take out the crystal and more taken scions will appear. Now, if your group needs ammo, this is one of the ways that you can get ammo. You can wait for the crystal to show up, take out the crystal, and then go take out the scions, and hopefully they'll drop special ammo or heavy ammo or whatever you need so that you'll be able to do additional damage to both the boss and the knights. All right, so you've just taken out the Taken Scions and all the Knights are at one third health. Then you're ready to take them down. So do whatever you need to do to take them out quickly because once you get below one third, they will start to run and they will be coming at you at an alarming speed. So make sure that you have something to take them out. And once the first one goes down, he will drop an orb. Now the orb will only be there for about 15 seconds to 30 seconds, so you will want to pick it up relatively quickly. And once you pick up the first orb, you will have a timer. And unlike the ogre boss, this timer will not be reset when you get more orbs. It will continue to click down until it hits zero. So quickly take out the three knights, pick up all three orbs. Once you have at least one orb, you can start damaging the boss. If you have three, you're gonna maximize your damage. So the goal, of course, is to get all three orbs and do so quickly. Once you have all three orbs, put down a well, put down a rally barricade, whatever you happen to have, and then do damage to the boss. If your timer gets close to zero, once you have about five seconds left and it doesn't look like the boss is going to go down, go to that podium in the middle of the room and everyone needs to go there at the same time. And that will cleanse that buff slash debuff off of you because if it gets to zero, then you'll die. And then just rinse and repeat. Dolonkaru will bring three new knights in and a crystal, and then you just rinse and repeat what you did before until you get in Dolonkaru down. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check us out on social media, and thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you next time.